So some god on Reddit named Nicolads found a way to look up both Amara's and Zane's skill trees on Gearbox's Twitch stream site. I'm going to go through all of the skills really quickly in Zane's skill trees and then go through some of my thoughts afterwards. So this skill tree is split up into three different trees, all of which have one action skill. So there are three action skills total for each character. You can only have two action skills at the same time it seems, and skills down the tree are separated by augment abilities and passive abilities. Only four augment abilities can be used at the same time, and you can have as many passives as your heart desires. Definitely a huge change from Borderlands 2 for sure. So now let's go through the trees. Start here on his undercover tree, he has the skill Barrier. Uh, Drop a deployable barrier that blocks incoming projectiles. Zane and his allies can shoot through the barrier, dealing increased gun damage. Pressing the action skill button or the grenade button while the barrier is active picks up and holds the barrier, but the size and bonuses are decreased. First going down this tree, we have the passive ability Adrenaline. Zane gains increased action skill cooldown rate. This bonus is based on the amount of shields he has. The more percent full, the greater the bonus. Next up, we have Hardy Shock. Zane gains increased maximum shield capacity. And the next passive ability we have is Ready for Action. Zane gains improved shield recharge rate and shield recharge delay. Going further down the list, we have our first augment skill, Charged Relay. Whenever Zane or an ally touches the barrier, they gain increased movement speed and fire rate for a few seconds. The next passive ability we have is Brain Freeze. Whenever Zane scores a critical hit on an enemy, there's a chance they will be slowed. Up next, we have Stiff Upper Lip. Another passive ability, whenever Zane is damaged, he gains damage resistance against that damage type. Next passive ability we have is Rise to the Occasion. Zane gains health regeneration. The lower his shield is, the higher the bonus. While Zane's shields are full, he does not receive any health regeneration. Next we have our next augment ability. Nanites are some shite. Zane and his allies gain health regeneration, increased reload speed, and greatly improved shield recharge delay while near his barrier. The lower their health, the more health is regenerated. Our next passive ability is Confident Competence. While Zane's shields are active, he gains increased gun damage and accuracy. This bonus is based on the amount of shields he has. The more percent full, the greater the bonus. Our next augment ability is All Rounder. Zane's barrier becomes a dome covering all sides. And we have another augment ability, which is Redistribution. Zane and his allies near the barrier gain increased gun damage for a few seconds after the barrier takes damage. Our next passive ability is Really Expensive Jacket. Elemental damage over time effects applied to Zane have reduced duration. Next ability is Best Served Cold, which is our first kill skill on here. Whenever Zane kills an enemy, they create a Cryo Nova, dealing damage to all nearby enemies. The skill has a short cooldown. Next up, we have Futility Belt. Zane gains resistance to non elemental damage. And also, a kill skill, all elemental damage Zane takes is converted to non elemental damage. And we have our another augment ability, which is Deterrent Shield. Enemies that touch the barrier take shock damage and are staggered. We have Refreshment. Whenever Zane damages a frozen enemy with his weapon, he gains some of that damage back as health. And next we have Calm, Cool, and Collected. When Zane freezes an enemy, his shields instantly begin recharging. If Zane's shields are already full, he regenerates health for a few seconds. If Zane's health is already full, his action skill cooldowns and durations are immediately reset. Next we have Nerves of Steel. Zane gains increasing accuracy and handling. The longer his shield is full, the greater the bonus. And finally we have our capstone here. It is Distributed Denial, which is an augment ability. Zane's barrier gains the effects of his currently equipped shield mod, 
Additionally, shield effects are applied to all allies near the barrier. Bonuses to Zane are reduced. And going on to the next tree, which is called Hitman, the action skill is SNTNL. Send into battle an automated SNTNL drone that continually flies through the environment and attacks enemies with its machine guns. Pressing the action skill button or the grenade button while SNTNL is active causes it to attack the enemies under Zane's crosshairs, if any. And our first passive skill on this is Violent Speed. After killing an enemy, Zane gains increased movement speed for a few seconds. And on to our next skill, we have Cold Boar. Zane gains increased weapon swap speed. The next shot fired after swapping weapons deals bonus cryo damage. And next passive ability is Violent Momentum. Gun damage is increased while moving. The quicker he moves, the greater the gun damage bonus. And now we have our first augment ability, Winter's Drone. Converts SNTNL's primary weapons to cryo damage. On to the next skill, we have Cool Hand. Zane gains increased reload speed. After killing an enemy, Zane's reload speed is increased for a few seconds. Up next, we have Drone Delivery. Tree will occasionally drop a free grenade based on your current grenade mod while attacking enemies. Next up we have Salvation. After killing an enemy, Zane's weapons gain lifesteal for a few seconds. Our next augment is Bad Dose. SNTNL occasionally shoots out a beam of radiation that weakens enemies and buffs Zane. For every weakened enemy, Zane's movement speed and fire rate are increased. Weakened enemies have decreased movement speed and attack speed. Next skill is C in red. Activating an action skill automatically activates all of Zane's kill skills. Up next we have static field. SNTNL emits a static field that sends a shock beam to nearby enemies, draining their shields and replenishing Zane's. Up next is another augment ability, Boomsday. SNTNL adds a rocket pad to its primary weapons, allowing it to shoot rockets as well as machine guns. And next skill is Violent Violence. After killing an enemy, Zane gains increased fire rate for a few seconds. Next we have Playing Dirty. After killing an enemy, Zane's next five shots have a chance to fire an additional projectile. And our next augment ability is Almighty Ordnance. Hold down the action skill button or the grenade button while SNTNL is deployed to paint a target area. SNTNL fires a missile barrage at that area, and if an enemy is killed, Almighty Ordnance duration is reset. This can only be used once per action skill use. Up next we have Good Misfortune. Killing an enemy increases Zane's action skill duration. This skill has diminishing returns. And finally, our capstone is Death Follows Close. All of Zane's kill skills gain increased effect and duration. And that caps off our Hitman skill tree, and we'll be going over here to our Doubled Agent skill tree, which the skill is Digiclone. Spawn a Digiclone of Zane. This clone stays in place, but distracts and fires at enemies. Pressing the action skill button or the grenade button while the clone is active causes Zane and the clone to swap places. Our first skill in this tree is Synchronicity. Whenever one or more of Zane's action skills are active, he gains increased gun damage for each action skill. And our next skill is Premunitus. Premunitus. I probably pronounced that wrong. Zane and his Digi clone gain increased magazine size. And we have our next passive ability, which is Borrowed Time. Zane gains increased action skill duration for every action skill active. And next we have another augment ability, Binary System. Whenever Zane swap places with his clone, a Cryo Nova is triggered around Zane and his clone. Up next we have Donnybrook. Whenever Zane kills an enemy, he and his Digi clone receive increased gun damage and gain health regeneration for a few seconds. Next we have Fractal Frags. The Digi clone throws a copy of Zane's current grenade mod when it is first activated. If the Digi clone is killed, it drops a free grenade. Killing an enemy while the Digi clone is active gives the clone a chance to throw a grenade. 
Next we have Duct Tape Mod. The first shot fired from Zane's gun has a chance to also fire a grenade. The more grenades in his capacity, the higher the chance. Next we have Schadenfreude. Whenever the clone takes damage, Zane's shield is restored by a portion of that damage. Next skill is Quick Breather. Whenever Zane swaps places with his clone, his shield immediately begins recharging. And our next skill is Which One's Real? Enemies are more likely to target the clone for a few seconds after it's summoned and after swapping places. Up next we have Doppelbanger. Hold down the action skill button or the grenade button to end the action skill early. When Zane's action skill is ended, the clone explodes, dealing fire damage to all nearby enemies. The more action skill time remaining, the greater the damage. Next we have Pocket Full of Grenades. After killing an enemy, Zane gains grenade regeneration for a few seconds. Up next we have Old U. Press the action skill button or the grenade button during fight for your life if Digiclone is active to destroy the clone and immediately gain a second win with full health. Next we have Supersonic Man. Whenever one of Zane's action skills are active, he gains increased movement speed for each active action skill. Next we have Digital Distribution. If Zane takes health damage while the clone is active, a portion of that damage is shared to his clone instead. Next we have Like a Ghost. Zane and his Digi clone gain a chance to ignore bullets. This chance is increased for a few seconds after activating an action skill, and this effect also stacks. Next we have Boom Enhance. Whenever Zane summons his Digi clone, it consumes up to three grenades. For every grenade consumed, the Digi clone gains increased gun damage, max health, fire rate, and reload speed. Next we have Trick of the Light. Zane deals bonus shock damage to enemies that aren't targeting him. And finally our capstone is Double Barrel. The clone is equipped with a copy of Zane's current weapon when activated. Swapping places with the clone causes Zane and his clone to gain increased gun damage. So Zane's skills sound like a combination of Athena, Wilhelm, and Zero mixed with Timothy. So I would say the barrier sounds the most interesting to me. It would be pretty lame by itself, but the fact that you can pick it up makes it sound much, much more interesting. The skill in this tree that excites me the most is best served cold, which sounds like a super OP kill skill depending upon the cooldown that could be a badass cloud kill. Now the tree that excites me the most, not necessarily the skill, is Hitman. It has what could be a super powerful combination of skills, sea and red, and death follows close. Sea and red activates kill skills when you use your action skill, which I'm just picturing people in Borderlands 2 proccing kill skills by dragging enemies into a raid boss arena, but now it only takes an action skill to do so. And then death follows close, which boosts all of those kill skills. Digiclone is kind of strange to me, especially the teleporting part. I feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity to create a melee tree, but we can't all get what we want. Anyways, this is awesome news. I'm super pumped. Demonites, start making builds and grace the community with your brilliance. And for the love of God, please come out game. I'll try to showcase the Amaris tree as well soon, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, remember to dislike, unsub, spoil Game of Thrones, and I won't see you in the next one.